So neurology, today we're going to talk about visual um, lesions or visual field defects. These are, these are, there's no excuse really to miss one of these on the boards. Once you get this, uh, once you get this down, you'll have it forever. So let's get started. Um, here is a very simplified overview of what we're talking about. So these are your temporal fibers here in blue. And the ones in red are also known as your nasal fibers. The ones in blue are your temporal fibers. But notice your temporal fibers on both sides see nasally. And both of your nasal fibers from the mid middle see temporal fields on both sides. That's a very basic understanding, but that's where you got to start. Okay, so now that we got that down, um, what happens right here? So you can also think of it as not them seeing this way, but light is projecting. So if light is right here in the nasal part of the visual field of the left eye, remember this is left, this is right. So if, if an image is right here in the nasal field of the left eye, what is seeing this image is the temporal side of the left retina. And therefore, it's going to be projected back to the temporal side of the lateral. This is the lateral genicular nucleus on both sides. So everything on the left, the left eye, the fibers from that in the optic tract and the, the optic nerve um, or the optic tract is seen on the right eye from the left optic tract is seen, the nasal fiber is seen temporal, and then the temporal fiber or neuron is seen nasally. So if you really want to just talk about the left eye, sometimes it's easier just to look with what one eye is seeing. So that right there is what is being seen by the left optic tract or the axons in the left optic tract. It's seen on the right eye, it's seen nasally, which is the fibers run nasally, which is seen temporal field, and the nasal field is being seen by the temporal axon on the left eye, all going back to the left geniculate nucleus. Notice that the nasal fibers on both sides are the only ones that cross ever. Temporal fibers, as we said before, do not cross but they do see nasally. Now to add a little bit more to this story, we got to look at this picture. So it's the same thing, fibers coming back to the lateral geniculate nucleus, but now we have something called Myers loop and the optic radiations, okay? And this right here in green is Myers loop. Notice that he is out in front of the other fibers. Now, in gray here is, this is what is called the, or actually it's not what's in gray, but the whole thing here is called the optic radiations. And as we will see, those progress to the occipital lobe. Now, here's a full, full schematic of what we've been talking about, and it's very simplified. Um, some people like to look at it this way. This is usually the way I draw it. If I'm ever asked a question, make sure I don't miss miss a easy answer. Or if some people actually, and here's actually a, um, a better view. of. So right here you have the optic chiasm where the nasal fibers cross. Okay. And this is a really good diagram to uh, if you were to see an arrow going from left to right, here's how your visual field would process that arrow. So as you can see, it's color coded. What's in red over here on the right will be seen by the left optic axons, okay? But on the right eye, the nasal fibers will see the temporal field. And then the temporal field, the temporal field of the left eye will see the nasal fibers. It will see nasally. And then the same thing is said with the green. So here is the optic nerve before, notice, before the optic chiasm. This is where a lot of points are missed. The optic nerve is always before the optic chiasm. 
then once you get past the optic chiasm before you get to the lateral geniculate nucleus you call that the optic tract where there's no crossing of fibers and none of that okay so but it is carrying in the optic tract it is carrying information from the opposite eye on the nasal fibers all to synapse the lateral geniculate nucleus and then you get into the Myers loop which it and this is where the whole thing is known as the optic radiations and notice it's at the calcarine fissure right here all projecting to the occipital lobe so here is a better way to understand this um, anything everything in the visual system I always think okay just flip it and make it opposite and you'll get the right answer but to really understand it anything in the lower visual field is seen by the upper part of the retina okay which projects back to the upper part of the lateral geniculate nucleus to give rise to these fibers right here in the optic radiation now the middle visual field just projects straight back and it's pretty much a straight shot so we don't even they're not going to ask you about that but the lower visual field and you'll see why we're going over this when we get into the um, deficits the lower visual field is seen by the top of the retina okay or the top of the eye and that projects back like we said up here in the bottom or the upper visual field is seen by the bottom part which becomes Myers loop so if you have a problem and you know it's in Myers loop or you have a lesion down here you know you're going to have an upper visual field problem okay and like I said everything's flipped so if it's a left Myers loop problem in your right eye you're going to have a quadrinopsia and we'll see what that means here in a second so here is a picture of it's color coordinated so this is the middle visual field so you're not really seeing anything there notice that the green is what's seen all the way along here on the contralateral side and the pink is seen on this contralateral side there's the midbrain the pons the medulla and all that and the, as you can see they go back here to the, the optic radiations go back to the occipital lobe notice the most anterior one is synapsing up here at the top of the occipital lobe and the lower one here is synapsing at the bottom so that's just a really good um, I like this picture I refer to it a lot when I can't understand what's going on so let's get started on the visual field deficits now to start off with you need to know that light must hit the retina before three three months of age or that child will be permanently blind the boards I've seen a question on that just know that you know they figured it all out it's it's three months of age light must hit the retina um, or that child will be permanently blind so how do I make use of that clinically well in a newborn one of the things you have to rule out in the visual system is a cataract right because a cataract will obstruct light from hitting the retina so what what virus or how might the boards present that into a secondary tertiary question what virus is associated with cataracts in a newborn rubella virus exactly very good now I'm not saying that all um, cataracts in newborns are caused by rubella I'm just saying that's a way the boards can test you on it actually that's that's the zebras right there usually it's just congenital cataracts are also um, um, what's the other thing that could cause cataracts you got a retinoblastoma very good so that could be on your differential as well so that brings us to our first lesion so what we're going to do is we're going to lesion right here that is the optic nerve so remember up here at this drawing see right here this is what we're lesioning it's the optic nerve okay so if you lesion the optic nerve and we would draw a set of eyes here this being the left this being the right left right what would you what would you expect to see in this left eye because this is where the fibers are being cut well you're going to have monocular blindness is what they call it you ain't going to be able to see nothing out of your left eye okay that's if you lesion the optic nerve now the right eye is going to be fine because see his fibers are still good so that is our first lesion now in a newborn you're supposed to think of retinoblastoma In younger children or adults you're supposed to think of uh, gliomas 
Now, if it's not gliomas, they could also go for uh, transient ischemic attacks in adults in the elderly. Um, there's that classic term, amaurosis fugax. That's what they're talking about there. Now, with amaurosis fugax, a clot usually goes into the retinal artery will include that artery, so, you know, it might take four to six hours for that clot to break up or it might not break up at all, and that's when the vision, they lose their vision four to six hours, and then it comes back. So that's what amaurosis fugax is talking about. And that's from TIA and adults to the elderly patients. Now, the only other thing to talk about is a central venous or a central artery occlusion now. So the only question is, how do I tell if it's a venous or an arterial clot in the central retinal artery? Well, when you look at the retina with the venous clot, you're going to see blue, right? Venous blood is blue, less oxygen. But if you look at the retina and it's an arterial clot, you're going to see a pale retina, right? There's no blood supply getting to it. So that's how you tell the difference between the two. And that brings us to our second lesion, which we're going to do right here at the optic chiasm. So as you can see, we're, le we're lesioning both nasal fibers, which are crossing. So what, could, what, is, what is right underneath the optic chiasm? The pituitary gland and the pineal gland. Very good. So as you can see here, both nasal fibers are running to the temporal sides, right? So if you were to lesion the optic chiasm, what you will see is something called a bitemporal hemianopsia, right? Because all this part of the eye is going to be out, and this part of the right eye will be out. And that's why they call it tunnel vision. Bitemporal, or bi yeah, bitemporal Hemi, opposite sides, hemianopsia, bitemporal hemianopsia. So what are a few things that could do this? So the two things on your differential here, if you ever see bitemporal hemianopsia, is a pituitary or pineal adenoma. Now, if it's a pituitary adenoma, what lab do you want to check? It's pituitary adenoma, you want to check prolactin levels. If it's a pituitary adenoma or pituitary tumor, you want to always look at their prolactin levels. Now, if it's a pineal tumor, they usually go for this on the boards. They'll say something like their menstrual cycle is off or, or something like that, precocious puberty, McCune Albright syndrome, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They usually like to default straight to uh, problems like that. So, yeah, that is bitemporal hemianopsia lesion of the optic chiasm. So the next one we're going to talk about is a lesion to the optic tract. Now notice it's before the, um, the LGN, the lateral geniculate nucleus, but it's past the optic chiasm, okay? This is going to give you something called a homonymous, for same, homonymous hemianopsia. Okay, so if we draw our eyes out, what are we going to see? Whoop, you just follow the two tracks right here. So this one, the temporal fiber is seen nasally, so you lose these nasal fibers. And then in the left eye, this one right here is seen temporally. So same side, homonymous hemianopsia. That's if you lesion the optic tract. Okay, and also you need to know this is usually a lesion in the parietal lobe. Lesion in the parietal lobe, that's where this optic tract fibers are running. Okay, so the next lesion is what's going to be called a quadrinopsia. So what you're doing is you're lesioning something back here, one of these fibers, at the cingulate gyrus. Now notice like we drew out earlier, some fibers go to the top. There's a lot of, you know, all kinds of things going on back here, but they're going to the occipital lobe, the cingulate gyrus, but some fibers, like in Myers loop right here, are going to the top and some are going to the bottom, right? All right, so when you get with the quadrinopsies, if we were to lesion right there, what would we see in the left and the right eye? Well, to truly understand this, you need to look back at this picture right here, right? Myers loop is the upper visual fields are seen at the bottom part of the or hitting the bottom part of the retina, which are continuing the fibers after they synapse the lateral geniculate nucleus going to the occipital lobe. 
their Myers loop is on the bottom right here, or it's the most anterior. So therefore, you're going to lose your upper visual field. So if we lesioned right there, what would happen is you would have a quadrinopsia. So you would see something like this. Superior. superior quadrinopsia because the fibers right here are supposed to be seeing the top part that the most anterior so we've lesion Myers loop right here and that's therefore where do these fibers run well this one right here is seeing the temporal or the nasal the temporal fiber is seen nasally and the nasal fiber is seen temporally so that's why you get that very simple so next up what are we going to lesion well, let's say we lesion the optic radiations before those fibers join with Myers loop, okay? So if we lesion the bottom part of the optic radiations here, what would we see? Again, go back to this picture. And if you are losing, or if the optic radiations fibers right here are lesion before they join up with Myers loop fibers and the middle visual field fibers, where would we be losing. We would lose our lower visual field. So therefore, we can now go and draw this in. This is also going to be another uh, quadrinopsia, but it will be called an inferior quadrinopsia. Okay, so inferior quadrinopsia. All right, and lastly, what if we lesioned, let's get a better better picture to look at this. What if we were to lesion the entire calcarine fissure, which is right here, the whole thing. So that's what we're lesioning in this picture down here. We're lesioning the whole calcarine fissure in the occipital lobe. What would you get? Well, we know the fibers running here, temp the temporal fibers are running nasally. They're seen nasally, and the nasal fibers are seen in the left eye from the right track fibers are seen temporally. So we know we're going to get a contralateral homonymous hemianopsia, but what's special if we lesion the calcarine fissure? This is left, this is right. Yeah, right. You get macular sparing. Okay, so you're still getting a contralateral uh, homonymous hemianopsia, but you will get macular sparing in both eyes. Okay. Now, what could be on your differential for something lesioning back here in the in the posterior fossil area? Well, it could be TB. Tuberculosis loves to infect infect the uh, posterior fossa. Could be a uh, meningioma, right? Could be a uh, could be any of these things that, that so look for something that's going to affect the posterior or the occipital over the posterior fossa of the brain. So. That, that's pretty much all the boards expect you to know. It's, it's literally that simple. They might ask you, you know, you know, if you're in the parietal or the temporal lobe or, you know, maybe the, um, you know, where TB or a meningioma or craniopharyngioma or something like that can infect. So associate those. But if they give you, which they probably will, they just want you to understand it on this basic level and you'll be more than fine on the board. So these are very easy points. Don't miss these. All right. Best of luck to you.